All right, there we go. Hi, thanks for coming. Um, we have the disclaimer PowerPoint screen on the front here for you. And then we'll have our questions for you to answer. The reason we ask if you're on a PC or on a phone 
is so that we, it'll be your second question, I believe. Um, few, so let me back up, sorry. So a few of the questions we have, the first one is, have you tied before? And then that way I kind of know where everybody's at with what I'm gonna go through. Um, then we have, um, if you're on a, if you're streaming from a PC and a tableted phone show up about the same for the Zoom webinars, um, with the PC, you'll be able to see the PowerPoint throughout. And then if you are on a phone, you'll only be able to see the PowerPoint or the fly tying. So um, if you have the PC as an option, please do that. And then um, if you are tying with us or not, that way I kind of know if uh, we need to verbally communicate. That way I don't want you to... Um, have to drop any materials or anything like that if you have a question while you're tying. Um, and if you're in a nice quiet place, uh, we can have you unmuted. So uh, please answer those questions. That way we know where everybody's at. Our first fly is on the video here with my face frozen for you. And, um, and then I'll go over uh, the vice um, tools that you will need and the materials are listed also on the beginning of the PowerPoint. So it'll just be a couple basic flies, nothing crazy. Um, if we have time, the second fly will be a grasshopper or popper. Um, and it's just from a, a hopper parts kit with using foam, or if you have foam and want to cut it, um, it's a great tool to have in your fly tying materials. And then uh, we'll modify it with wings and patterns on the legs and maybe even thrown an antenna. So we'll turn off the questions uh, right at two. And if you have any questions before we get started, go ahead and type them into the Q&A box. There we go. Give you an idea of the fly we're going to tie first. And your colors are totally up to you. I'm sure some are in northern Nevada, some are in southern Nevada. Think of the fish that are in that water. This is supposed to imitate a minnow, a minnow or a small fish that um, either a trout would feed, or I'm sorry, that a bass would feed on. So mine kind of looks like a bass, or a, a um, small trout is what I was going for. 
and our bass in southern Nevada love the color chartreuse, so I went with a small bead to get it started. And so we'll give it one more minute to answer the questions and then and see if there's any stragglers and then we'll start tying. Well, and then we'll look over the answers and then we'll start tying. That way I know if everyone can see it. Um, also, you have the option of on the screen, you can make the fly bigger or the PowerPoint bigger. I try to make all the lettering, it'll be the same size as the first screen here. So all the directions will also be there. If that is easier for you to follow along, I did want the option of having them both going at the same time. And again, if you're on here with your phone and are trying to fly, tie, and follow the directions, you'll have to go back and forth between the first main screen that I'm sharing and the second screen. And um, my name's listed there, my email and number. Um, if you want to save this, feel free to screenshot so that you have the information for later. Nicole Haddad is our conservation aide. She is going to moderate while I'm tying. So if you have any questions, please let her know. And then she can um, shout them out if um, I miss something that somebody has a big question about. Um, I'll also have my information on the last screen when we have any closing comments. And feel free to screenshot um, the directions as you go if you're following along and will tie later on on your own. And hopefully this will be a regular thing and we'll do all kinds of different flies throughout the summer. All right, so we will go ahead and hopefully everyone was able to answer the questions. And we'll close that up. Awesome, 100% on the PC, very good. So that'll make it easier. So remember, there's a little double line in between the PowerPoint being shown and my screen with the fly here. Um, wherever that. Um, and so you can adjust it, whichever one you want to make bigger. And oh, we have one time with us. Awesome. I don't see names, so raise your hand if you do need to say something as we go. All right, and then as the disclaimer says, if we have a, and yeah, there's Nicole's disclaimer for you on the chat, um, any language or anything inappropriate, we, um, when we say mute, we mean uh, muting from the program, so we'll just um, exit you out from here if we have to. Uh, you won't have the option of rejoining if you ask, if you do get kicked out. So um, keep that in mind, and hopefully this will be awesome. Um, we will try to keep it to right at 30 minutes. The first fly should only take 15 minutes, and then we'll do the popper for another 15 minutes. All right. Let me move my little side screens. We'll switch this one out. I am tying with a six. The reason I did that is um, that way when we tie the hopper second, um, it fits best with him. So I just got the pack of size six hooks out, streamer style. I also clamped the barb down and actually had to bend it a little bit. So I'm gonna bend it back. That way I could get the bead on for the head. And you want your bead big enough to get onto the hook and around the shank. And then you also want to be able to draw a fancy little eye, just like in the picture there to the left. All right, so I'm going to tilt this down a little for today. Usually I do tilt it up. Um, and that way the bead doesn't wiggle around. And I'm going to start, I'm going to use olive today um, for my thread. It's always, almost always recommended to use six aught thread and slightly wax is a little easier. It kind of sticks to itself as you're tying. Um, another option is really awesome. You can do red thread. There we go. And then um, you can always do light green 
or even white on a couple other examples I've seen since you have the white underbelly. All right, but I like the olive. It makes it a little darker. It gives it some contrast with everything. And when you're tying, make sure it is nice and taut. I'm not gonna wiggle on me. And then take your string up top and go back and forth. And then we're going to trim right above here. And make sure you always go in the same direction. So for me, it is easier to go away from myself. And then that way I can cover up that end thread as well, tag end, and hang. And we're gonna tie on right there. And as we tie on, we're going to go along towards the front. You always want to finish at the front because that's where we tie off. That's the easiest. All right. I've got my materials for halfway through there. All right, so first things first, we need uh, the hair. So we're gonna use buck tail. You can always start with the white. I'm going to take a little clump about that much from the bottom. And uh, whatever piece you cut off, keep in mind you do want your tail to come out to right along almost double the hook itself. So you want long, but maybe not too long. So, so it takes a minute to find the right pieces. And you can even like hold it up and measure it. So I'm thinking these actually might be the best. And you don't want too much because this, because um, it's so thick and coarse. It is hard sometimes. If you have too much, it can actually just pull right out on you. And also, because it's so thick, as you tie it on, um, you don't want to pull too tight, or that's when it starts fanning out on you. So, especially for the bottom layer, we don't want it to fan out. So, we're going to hold it taut. Let's see how it pushes down there. We don't want that to do that in the back. We'd rather it go down especially for this bottom layer, then you pull and then cover it all up. We'll get covered as we go. All right, push it down. All right, all right, we have that. So then we're gonna actually flip it over, making sure this does not come off. There we go, keep it tight. Go ahead and tilt it like that. Bring it back up. And when we finish, we'll um, push that bead head right to the front. So it's not a big deal. It's just more of a nuisance right now that it's not tightened up. All right, and then we're going to add more white. And we want the white to cover this hook, especially for bass and weeds. It's really nice having the hair over um, the hook so it doesn't make it as easy to catch. And you can get whatever length you end up finding. It's not that big of a deal. You can always trim it. And I did with my practice one in the pictures there. You can see it was a lot longer initially. All right, so this one would be fine for it to fan out as we tie it on. So we're going to tie it right into the other parts that are sticking out. And this is the tricky part is to be able to pinch this on 
be far enough forward. Make sure the user are staying back. Push that in for now. There we go. Make sure you also get all the little hook errors out of inside there because that's just more weight and bulk we don't really need. All right, let me pinch that back on. This is the tricky part of this one. And as you pull it forward, that'll help cover those wild hairs out. All right, pull back over, make sure it's nice and tight. Go ahead and release for a second. Pull your hairs back up, drain it back down. All right, we're gonna clean this all up. You can see that the is not moving around as much. So as you're making these, always think of what is the fish going to see, right? So what is the fish wanting to eat? What are they feeding on? So we do white underneath. Um, and usually fish are lighter underneath and darker on top. That way they hide from all predators. So the predators are aerial view. They're looking down into green waters. So something, a tail, and this one's dyed green bucktail. So then you have the darker in the middle with the brown and then the olives. So since it's spring, summer, we're gonna go with this nice lighter color on top. And that is going to protect a fish naturally from aerial predators. So that's why fish are usually darker or harder for you to see. And then underneath they're white and when a predator, another fish or otter, anything from underneath is looking up at them, they see the sky in light and white. So the white is what they're looking up into. All right, so we're kind of almost back where we started and then we're gonna tie this green on, pinching between our fingers and down and then pulling it top. You go back and forth, and it's okay. Um, trout flies are generally smaller, sleeker, and smaller because they feed on a lot of insects mainly. Bass are definitely feeding on other fish. So having a bulkier fish lure, your fly here, is pretty good. This could even be tied as a, like a lure with a spinning rod. You just have to have some weight and do, rig it kind of like a drop shot. 
just like you would for any bats. I'm going to do one more layer on top so I have a little bit. Oh, before I add more green, actually, I got going too fast. And we'll go on to the next screen. Step five is tying in the polar. So we want to tie in the attractant, which is going to be the, um, or it looks like tensile. And I've got a UV and polar flash. So I get these together and then grab my UV one. Which disappeared on me. I'm gonna kind of do a little extra on this one. So I'm just gonna do a couple strings of the polar flash and one of the UV flash. You can kind of see the UV one is this one. And this gives a lot of options. Um, you can, it's really cool looking up a bunch of different articles on why all this different stuff is out and about. But when an animal, um, their eyes are a little different than ours, they see differently. So what's cool about this is you're creating different colors too, depending on what's visible in the light for them. They have different sensors for light in their eyes. So this kind of gives different options depending on how light or bright it is for them to be able to see. Um, so a cool trick with this is just double it up. And so I want to create it a little longer. I'm going to cut all this down. Actually, we can cut that down really quick. Perfect. Kind of flare it out all around. And then once we get it off the bikes, we can trim it up more. That one. Okay. And then that way, when we tie it in, I'm going to go back a little bit more to the beginning of where we did the green. Um, when we tie it in, it'll double and it'll stick out a little bit. So you push it around the line and it hooks on, sit it right on top where you want it to sit because we're stacking it all and tie down. And it bends right over. And then we go back and make sure it is held in place on top. All right. And you can see all the loops from doubling it over. So just cut back, cut back, cut back, cut back. And one more over here. Definitely, we'll turn this around for you to see my side. A little different on both sides. All right. But once it's in the water, it's just going to go like this and stick all together. So, all right. So, one more layer of green. I have already cut another bunch. So, we have another bunch there. We're going to stack it nicely, make sure it's nice and straight. If you need to, go ahead and trim it up to make it nice and even. It'll also keep it from flaring out on you. Alright, make sure it's nice. Tight little bunch. Put right on top where you're ready to tie it down. Pinch down. Alright, then we're going to cover all of this up. Gonna pull all the extra hair out. All right, we're gonna finish this up. Pull it all the way, that way the bee doesn't slide. Push test. All right, so I'm just gonna do 
an over double knot and we're going to stick it behind the bead. Go ahead and do one, I'll do two, and then I'm going to do a UV finish that way, a little some something in case they're catching the UV light that day. Just do it right across the top, it'll soak in down the sides. And it's a finish, it'll also help cement. So that'll be nice, that'll be a little wet, and then touch the bead and pull across and tie behind. There it goes up and over the bead. Makes it nice and clean. You can also do this with the dumbbell eyes. But right now it's hit or miss getting shipments. So I was not able to buy those. And then cut right here below so we have our knot there and pinch it up so it glues in. And then I also do a little um, cut cement here too. Right underneath. And then it soaks in. There we go. All right, so that one is done. I'll show you the other side. I have some extra hair cut off. Definitely want the flash to stick out at the end more. There we go. All right. And that one. Um, so then you can just take a permanent marker and you can even put little dots on your fur and break up the pattern, make it more look like an actual fish. Put a couple layers of permanent marker and now you have an eye. All right, we'll leave that one down and go on to the next one. If you have any questions as we're going, feel free to type them in. And Nicole can answer those for you. All right, so we're going to get ready for this guy. So you can get these popper kits. And it comes with legs and a body. And because we usually do live classes where we supply all your materials, we have all this available. Um, I don't know if everybody saw the news. I know I've gotten, I walked up and down my street and found a few hoppers all over the place. So definitely wanted to stick with the uh, tan. Seems to be a good color out here. It's what they're Hitting. So this would be a good one for the urban ponds where we're having grasshoppers. And then I'm going to cut the legs off the kit and cut right along there. All right, so we have those pieces and then grab the back, back away. Grab my hook bag. And again, like I said, we use this size six streamer hook. And we can leave the barb on that one. Put it right down there. All right, we're centered. All right, and where we start, we have the directions, I think, on the next one. Next slide. All right, so you want the head over the eye of the hook. So we're gonna tie in the back of the body and as we do that, it'll actually naturally pop it up. All right, so I'm gonna stick with the green again um, because it has in the light, it kind of gives it a tan color. You can kind of see there. Um, 
and then it breaks up the pattern too. And then um, at the end, we can draw um, onto the onto the legs as well. All right, so I'm actually going to put a little cement just barely right where I'm going to tie it, and that's going to help hold it on do the hook a little bit better. We're going to come and draw it all the way down. All right, let that soak in a second and go ahead and get the line started. Almost always will start with your thread. And you could always do red on this one. Again, it's a different color wave. It makes it look wounded, all that fun stuff. Right on top there. Cover that tag end up. All right, and then double check where this is going to land. And you can see we're right where the line. And so we're going to make sure we don't hit that hook. Flip it over. I've got the glue underneath the head cement. And set that right on top. Nice. And make sure it's straight. And pull down, straight, pull, pull down. Not too taut though, because we do not want it to necessarily rip. All right. So we've got that held in place. Now we're going to go ahead and move up to the next one, and that's where we're going to we're going to tie in the legs. We've got about four wraps on the first notch. Then we're going to do four wraps on this notch, but we're going to start with just two. And the legs, I actually had a mess with this one a few times. So. to um, get the legs to stick up. I actually went underneath, up to the thread, wiggled that in. And then as you pull them up and on the line, there we go, the legs will stick up. And they have red in them too, so it's pretty nice. And pull down, and that holds them up in place. Also, I found it was easier to go ahead and put in the um, the wings here. So for my wings, I'm going to do a little bit of red, and then I don't actually have the original packaging for this one, but it comes just like the flash does, and it looks just like the stuff that comes in your Easter basket bottom and it's nice and straight and so it gives it that sheen green sheer green and just like I did with the flash on the other one I'm gonna make sure this is nice and trimmed up and I'm gonna keep all of it but I'm gonna double a lot so that the wings don't look too crazy sticking up all right so double And double. So I'm just going to do it twice and go ahead and pull it on here again. Hold it on top. Pull grasshopper back up. And as I'm going over, I'm picturing where I'm going to lay this. Make sure it's going in the right same direction. And we're going to lay it on top. So we have our feet and wings tight in there and we want them to stick back a little bit so we're going to try to push this forward a little and push it down and that'll be okay I just felt like Bob Ross just now saying that all right 
Now we've got the legs back, adjust them. And again, mess with these, cut all this off, spread it out a little on top. So have one long one go one way, short one the other. We've got our wings sticking back there. There we go. All right, and it'll hold more in place once we get the head on too. I'm losing this leg. All right, so always tying underneath, we're gonna move on to the head and a bunch. There we go. Sit on top there. And then antennas. So for the antennas, I really liked using the peacock curl. And it comes with a little red on the um, dyed. It's called. Peacock curl strung red. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. Right. So I'm actually going to take two different ones. There we go. Make sure that the reds are about the same length. That's going to be my antenna. I'm actually going to make it the red. But do it right, we can do antennas there and then go ahead and add these two as part of the wings. We're in, this is actually the perfect length, the shorter one is. And it came like that in the package. They're not all going to be the exact length, so it's perfect. All right. You don't have to be perfect either. All right, and then we're going to tie those in. Make sure that they kind of split and sit on top. So loose till you're sure where you want it. Make sure they stick up. Do another one. Kind of straighten them as you go and then tighten it down as you get there. And this stuff is pretty sensitive. If you pull too hard, it will break. So this may not be uh, one of your longest used. Once a bass hits it, it's probably done. There we go. All right, so we have a little antenna bug. And then if you want, add my eyes. You can add a couple of eyes. Or just like we did with the minnow, which I might, I'll do for now. You can always add the googly eyes. And we'll go to the next screen. Put on his little eye. Oh, okay, we'll go back maybe two so they can see. There we go, there's the googly eye on him. Turn that. There we go. And then trim it. So if this one's gonna go crazy, we'll just trim it down. And go ahead and trim this one down. Always away from your other one that you don't want to cut. There we go. All right. And we've got, sorry, get that focused again. So I have 
two bass flies, def modified as whatever you have around. Um, whatever you can make. There we go. All right, any questions? Any questions about any flies, anything, please contact me. There's my email address, phone number. All the calls are forwarded. If I don't answer right away, I'll call you back. Um, stay home for Nevada. Hopefully just a couple, you know, hopefully a couple more weeks, as Governor said last night. And hopefully, uh, see you again in another class so if you have any questions let us know we'll be on a couple more minutes All right, thank you for coming. Oh, here we go. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. All right, have a good weekend. Thank you.